that is what I'm celebrating. So fruitfulness is not just about an abundance of things coming, even though it is. But the fruit could be the fact that I had done something. I'm seeing a result of something that I had done. I, I, I had sacrificed, you know, with social media. I mean, for some of us, that could be a thing. Um, it could be a life that I want to be more... Um, you know, in prayer and more in the word of God, like whatever it is, like, do you see the fruit of that coming? And so I really started to just kind of reflect on what that meant for me and my contribution in that, in, in coming to light. And so we're coming nearing the end of the year where we are now starting to look to see what is it that God has done? What is my celebration about? Is it empty? And I know that it's not going to be empty because God does not give us empty promises. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to take that thought along. I would love for us to read together. So that's where my thought would be for us today. Okay. Psalm 67, and I'm reading from the King James Version. So, uh, okay, I should have it here. I'm sorry for delay. Psalm 67. It says, God be merciful unto us and bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us, that thy name, that thy way may be known among all the nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Did you hear that? Let all the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Thus sin and illumination. Mercy, blessing, and illumination. And so when I look at the book of Psalm, I know sometimes we, when we hear a song, we're thinking something that is, um, it's, so, it's, it's easy reading. Um, we think that anybody can, can get an understanding from Psalm. And, 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 and I would challenge that, Ms. Nomer, because a, a, a lot of the writings in Psalm is actually prophecy. And they are found in different prophetic books in the Bible. So as a matter of fact, even we can reference, and I've had some scriptures that I wanted to reference in Numbers and Leviticus in Exodus. There's a lot of things that we feel that we know because it's Psalms. It, it's easy to read because it's a limerick. It's a song. It's a type of, of, it's a grammatical way of saying it so it becomes easy to understand. But I want to make sure that when we read these books of the Bible, we understand what God is trying to say to us. In the book of Psalm, it is, um, the word Psalm in Hebrew means Sefer Tahlim. Sefer Talim means song of praises, which is also accompanied with music. Um, David, he wrote 73 of the 150 books, um, scriptures in Psalms, and along with um, Solomon and Asaph, Moses, and also the sons of Korah, and all, there's also some unknown writers. They gave us, you know, a, a, a wonderful book of praise, a book of exaltation, a book of prophecy, a book of intercession. These are all a part of what Psalm is. So it's loaded down with the kinds of presentation of praise. It's not just to just come and just say something in a, in a low-key kind of way, and there is nothing to it. But the, the, the book of Psalm has a lot for us to be excited about. It's a lot for us to celebrate. So if you're weary, there's a psalm for you. If you're excited, there is a psalm for you. If you're looking for something fresh, there is a psalm for you. There is a song for everything that and every gamut that, that, that covers our life. There is something in there that we can benefit from, that we can go to. And in this particular book of Psalm, as opposed to Psalm 65, one of the things that I loved and in reading and studying, we recognize that the Hebrew, the way that the Israelites worship, they come to the psalm. So when they see any little thing that happened in their life, there's an area of, of, of celebration that they give to. In Psalm 65, they, they were celebrating the, um, the corn, and they were celebrating the pomegranate, and they were celebrating anything that they had sown. But in Psalm 67, 
what they're now saying is we're not talking about that it's on the vine. It is now on my plate. What we planted is not in the field anymore. It's in my house. So this is a cause for me to celebrate because I had asked the Lord for something and he is now bringing it to pass. So how many of us? I think that is the challenge that we have. As a generation, we don't think about the little things that seemingly doesn't need to be focused on. When you think about the fact that you can remember your name without somebody having to remind you that this is who your name is, that's cause to celebrate. When you think about the fact that you can got dressed this morning and, and it looked all right, you didn't have some colors that didn't seem to work, that's cause to celebrate. When you can put your shoe on and, and you can tie them on your own, that's cause to celebrate. I don't want for us to, to take what God does for us lightly, to make it seem like it's the expected. I want for us to move out of the, the, the mode of being routined and recognize and acknowledge that every good gift comes from above. That God has caused certain things to happen in our lives. And it's for us to turn around and to celebrate. So I want for us to live a life that is worthy of God saying that I'm okay in blessing my child. Because at the end of the day, he'll turn around and bless me back. Oftentimes when God does things for us, we may tell other people. Yet we don't tell of the goodness of God. We don't tell of the greatness of God. We don't tell of the, the wondrous mercies of God. Even the miracles of God. Some of us are sitting here right now because of his mercy. We use these words and they become so, so calm and so common. And, 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 and we take it so lightly. But we don't recognize that it's a heavy word. It's not, we say mercy because we, it's just, it's a common word for us now. But it is more than just that, you know, the Lord has mercy on me. You know, this, 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 uh, um, this, I was looking at the, just one second. I need, I need to find that because I thought this was amazing. I need to find that, Jesus. There was 11, 11 different pronunciation. I couldn't pronounce them, but there are some meanings of the word that I wanted to bring out to you today for you to understand what God has done for you. For the things that bless the name of Jesus. So mercy, I found here, it presupposes guilt. You only cry mercy when you're guilty. Do you recognize that? If you're guilty of something, you only ask for mercy. You cry for justice when you're innocent, but you cry for mercy when you're guilty. So when you haven't done all the right things... When you haven't dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. When you haven't lived a life that you would be proud of. When we recognize that God has done some things for us that nobody else could do. We know it is because of the mercies of God. It's not enough for me to say, you know, it's my good deed. It's, it's, it's because of, I, was, I was so good. Some of us, God has covered some things in our life that, you know what, not even forensic can, can find them. He covers it so deep. He goes so far. He does some things that is amazing. He does some things that, God, you wonder, what is it? Why do you love me? And that song this morning, you know, it really just touches my heart. Jesus, you love me so much. Because the, the, to the extent that he goes, to the extent that he, that he protects me, the extent that he covers me, it is because of the mercies of God. It is not because I deserve it. And what is mercy? It is undeserved favor. I don't deserve this. Guilt would cause me to stand before a judge and to accept my punishment. But the mercies of God stepped in and said that I'll take the judgment. I'll pay the price. I'll do what it is that she's charged with. I'll take the penalty. That is what mercy causes for me. That is why while all of us are here this morning, it is because of the mercies of God. So we don't deserve this. 
we stand here and we sometimes would feel like I qualify. For the people who have it all together, they may even look at me and they say, why is she preaching? They may look at the person up here and say, why are they singing? But it's because of the mercies of God. It's because he can look beyond my fault and he can see my need for him. Even though I might have made choices that, did, that it wasn't the best choice, he didn't hold that against me. He covers me and he gives me a first chance, a second chance, a third chance, a tenth chance, a twentieth chance, a millionth chance. That is what mercy does. It is undeserved. It is not because I should be here. It is not because I do enough to be here. But God saw something in me that is of worth. And he knows that he can use my mess up to be an example for somebody else. So if we think that we need to live a life that is perfect, I'm telling you, your mess is more of a use for God than your perfection. Did you hear that? Your mess as more of a use to God than your perfect life. And this is not me giving you permission and occasion to go out there and do and mess up. But I'm saying if you do, and as a matter of fact, when you do, because it is guaranteed. Paul says in, in, in Romans chapter 8, I find in my body two laws fighting against each other. When I want to do good, evil, this flesh has no good thing in it. It is present with me. When I, when I pray and I fast and I say, say all the right things and I'm saying, God, this is my intention for you. This is what I want to do for you. And I go out there with all the good intention that I have. It takes nothing to get me off my game. Because we know that strong willed and intention, is, this is not the walk of faith for a believer. Your good intentions cannot take you anywhere in, in God. It is a faith walk. It is, Lord, I give myself over to you. This is what I want you to do in me, God. I'm availing myself to you. And then mercy steps in. And it helps you. It helps your commitment. It helps you do the things that you want to do for God. So we see in verse 1 here, it says, God be merciful, I'm sorry, upon us. And this was the same blessing that the priest pronounced upon the people in the book of um, Leviticus chapter 9. He talks about that. And even in Exodus, it first referenced that, Exodus 34 verse 6. And so when the people would be going out for the day to go and do their daily work, the, they would come before the priest. They would gather themselves together and stand before the priest. And the priest would wash his hands. And so before they would go out, he would pronounce a blessing upon them. He would just wash his hands over the people. And he would speak a word that would cause that would go before them and that would break open the heavens in front of them so whatever the enemy had in store the blessing of that day would cause the enemies basically to 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 disrupt the plan of the enemy and so before when they're coming back from their work let's say they will again come before the priest and the priest would bless them again and so this is an example of how mercy meets you going out and how mercy takes you home so when we think about us a lot of times in our days we are in and about in traffic we're doing things we're not even thinking about it and then we get to realize that God if it had not been for you I came home and there was no tragedy that happened to me there was no accident there was nothing that happened to me I have to stop and thank God for that do you understand what God has done for you in a world where there are mental illness, where people on a whim are doing things that they didn't even plan to do? The next person that stands behind them, this is a reason to celebrate. We can't take this lightly, people of God. We can't just make it seem that this is status quo and that, you know what, well, that's what he does. Because one day we could go out and we may not come back in. 
So when you do leave in the morning and you come back late at night, you have to stop before you go and start talking about what's not right and what's this, that, and the next. Stop and thank the Lord. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you for taking me out and for keeping me and for bringing me home safely. It seems like it's a, 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 you know, a, a grade one prayer, but I'm telling you, load it in that prayer. There is something of gratitude. And when you can praise God, you cause him to want to move on your behalf. We can't be mute about these things. We have so many examples in the scriptures where the priest would just pronounce a benediction. And a benediction is a blessing. This is not something that is just, you know, easy peasy. You just go and you just say whatever. So many times in, in church now we hear a lot of cliches. We don't hear word. We don't hear the choice word of the text anymore. We hear a lot of fillers. And at the end of the day, we leave and we're still depressed and we're still down. But when we use what the word of God says, it lifts my spirit. It causes me to see things differently. It gives me a hope. It gives me a place in, 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 in the kingdom of God. That it makes me feel that things, regardless of what it looks like right now, it will change. So I'm not praising God because the enemy attacks me. I praise God because I know right after the attack that there's going to be a blessing. That there's going to be a celebration. I'm not praising him because I'm broke. But I'm praising him because I know right now it may look that way. But after this, it's going to be different. After this, things are changing. After this, my life will be better. This is why we do what we do. Father Alice, talk about your, 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 your um, offering being furnished. Let your praise be furnished. Meaning, understand why you're praising. When we say praise the Lord, don't just do it as an automatic reflect. Do it because you know and you are, you are aware, you are conscious of what God has done for you. So you're not just saying, praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. But when you say praise the Lord, my heart just automatically connects to something that he has done. And I'm saying, God, if it had not been for you, the way you covered me, the way you took me out, even when I walked blindly into some things, he's done something for us. We have to live and walk in that level of consciousness. That when God does things for us, we don't come to think that that's just what he does. He did it for you specifically. Somebody else had done the same things and they didn't get to walk away. But you got a chance to walk away. You got a chance to turn around like the, like, 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 like the leper and say, thank you, Jesus. I don't just do it because I don't just accept it because I know that's what you do because you're a God that heals. But you're not just a God that heals, but you're a God that healed me. You're a God that healed me. My testimony is my testimony. You cannot take that away from me. I know what God has done for me. Even if our choices... We're deliberate. God still sees beyond our choices. He sees beyond our ignorance. He sees beyond the things that if we didn't seek him, he didn't hold it against me. Sometimes we make choices in the dark. And we think we're making the right choice. It's like Jacob. You think you're choosing Rachel and you wake up with Leah. Leah. He's like, this is my choice. This is what I want. No, I am purpose in what I'm choosing. And then the next thing you turn around, it's like, how did this happen? But I am so glad that he covers me. I'm so glad that he doesn't hold me, you know, in contempt. He doesn't hold me for the choices that I make. As a matter of fact, he covers me and then he elevates me. He promotes me. That is the God that I serve. That when I do things that I should, that would cause me to do, that would disqualify me from anything. He corrects me and then he makes me new. And then he said, you are still my child. You still belong to me. And not just that, but I'm going to put you at a level that others will realize that you are still, I'm still pleased with you. Saints of God, God has done some amazing things for me in the last year and a half. Some amazing things. 
For those of you who might have known my story, I'm just telling you when I see how at the end of the day, in one day, in one day, I lost 100% of my investment in one day. All my money was gone. And I looked and I cried. Yes, I recognize that it is not my God. I know that. You don't have to rebuke me. I'm going to tell you. I know it's not. I'm going my children. And I'm doing it alone. Hello? All right? And I want for them to see that, you know what, regardless of whatever your status in your home is, you have no excuse but to be an, a, a success. That you are from a single mother's home, then you know, then you can't really expect from me. I am trying to teach them the very opposite. To say it is because you're from a single mother home is why I have to be a success. You don't get a buy. Oh, you go out there, you study hard, and you do well. That is the example I'm trying to teach them. So when things happen to me and invested in some things and, you know, put, put, bought a lot of things and paid for a lot of things and all of that money got wasted. But that was one thing. But when that money was done, lost all my money. And I'm like, God, this has got to be a punishment. God, you, you must be punishing me for the choices that I made. And I cried and I mourned and nobody knew in here. Because I came in, yeah, you may have seen me cry. You may have thought it was for something else. But I'm telling you, it was the money I lost. I didn't have no money. <laughs> All my money was gone. Okay? Because, I'm the, I mean, Solomon said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or received my seed, my children. Now they're left to beg? No, I was mourning that. The possibility of them now going out there and begging. And I'm saying, God, you can't repent. I, I don't know what I didn't say. I don't know what I didn't do. And I remember there was a word that came and Pastor Jenny whispered to me and said, that word is for you. And I wish I had written it down or what the circumstance around that was. But it was somebody that was prophesying about a job um, and an increase. I was not even thinking about that that was possible because where I was, I was doing okay. And I, you know, wasn't unhappy about anything. And then all of a sudden, this position came up, and I wasn't even thinking about applying to anything. And then all of a sudden, I worked in this district before, and they called me and said, we heard about you. This is how God will just create favor for you. I never sent out a resume. They said, we heard about you, and we want you to apply. I never applied to this job because it was levels above mine. I have a job. So I'm okay, well, at least, just, at least let me pay my mortgage. And the person said, I want you to apply to this job. And I, I, I haven't applied to a job in years. I didn't even have a rest. God just moved things out of the way. He just orchestrated everything that now I'm in a position that I don't even, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm say this because I know this is going to go live and I already have the job so they can't fire me. I'm not even qualified. I, I'm not qualified for this. But God will give you favor. But when you have favor, God will cause the justice system to work on your behalf. So I'm telling you how God does things for you. So what else? If you're struggling, not in a sense just financial struggle, but thinking, what's going? Something gets uprooted. Things get dug up and I don't know what is happening. I'm telling you, continue to water that seed. Continue to pour out your tears upon that seed because God knows that it will come up. The scripture I know in another context that said, you know, that sow in tears shall reap in joy. My tears will water the seed, that dry ground that that seed is in. It will be watered by the tears but that God will see. And he will acknowledge, he will recognize mercy, but blessings, blessings. A part of blessings is bounty. Blessings is, I want you to be able to bless other people. I want you to be able to do for other people. God doesn't just bless us because he wants for us to just look good. But I want to be able to turn to my brother and sister and say, here, I bless you today. Have this. No, it's not alone. You. No, it's not alone. Are you? No, it's not alone. Because the word of God, it dictates my life. 
And what it says, I will make you the head, not the tail. Above only, never beneath. And this is where I love. I will make you a lender to nations. A lender to nations and not borrow. I am waiting for a nation to come. I know God will put me into a place. And maybe it doesn't necessarily mean that the country, you know, of Africa is going to come and borrow from me. But I'm saying different nations. Maybe people within Africa will come and borrow from me. I don't know. But I believe that God is going to put me in a place and put you in a place that other people will come and seek out help from you. And it won't be a strain for you to say, sure. It won't be a strain to say, have at it. Pay me back when you want to. Pay me back. When don't worry about the interest. Just give me back my principles. That's how <laughs> I believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It doesn't matter even, even if the clock hits midnight and it didn't happen for you in the time frame that you thought it was going to happen. Don't be discouraged. Don't think that, ah, missed it. Ah, okay, I don't have a testimony. I'm telling you, the faith that you have arrived at, the faith that has been birthed in you through this process is a testimony. You are believing God more than you've ever believed God before. How can you say that's a waste? And I'm not trying to, you know, put it at baseline, but I'm letting you know that whatever God has promised you, he will bring it to pass. He is not going to apologize for the blessings that he promised you. If God said he will do it, he will do it. And I know there are some things that would happen in my children's life as opposed to my lifetime. But I believe there are some things that I'm going to experience in my lifetime. I'm going to realize and actualize. And that's what Psalm 67 was talking about. In 65, they were thanking God because they say a bud. They were thanking God because they saw an ear of corn. But in Psalm 67, now it's here. The abundance has come. Blessing has come to the house. So I'm now going to celebrate God. So you have to look at what's coming. As a matter of fact, he cannot lie. Even if he wanted to lie, he cannot lie. So just know that your promise is sure. It is secure. You can literally rest upon knowing that God, if you said it, it is so. It is as good as done. Don't allow the circumstance around you to take you off your journey. Don't allow the circumstances around you to make you want to lose heart and to give up. Continue to believe God. I, I have some things in my life that I'm still believing God for. I haven't arrived. There's still many things that I know that I want from God. But I, but I know in the meantime, he's taking his time preparing it. He's going to bring, girl, I'm telling you, when God brings somebody. Maybe you're, you already have your somebody and it don't mean nothing to you. But I'm telling you, the way that God is preparing for me. It's not going to be just no anybody. It's going to be somebody. So my prayer has changed. I'm not asking God just to just bring him. Don't bring him, God. I don't have no time to be stopping and starting again, God. I got to run. I got things to do. I got places to go. I got to travel, girl. So Lord, if he can't afford to travel, don't even bring him, God. Okay. My Bible tells me that my God is concerned about the things that I'm concerned about. And little things like that concerns me. I don't want to have to raise a house. I'm telling you. I'm telling you my heart. I'm, I'm confessing the things that I sometimes pray about. God, you're going to make it so right. I'm at the point. I'm like, God, don't even let me be attracted to 
come go with me here. Understand what I'm talking about. When you have gone through a process of and a series of things, and sometimes you kind of don't, you don't, you don't trust your own judgment. So I can't allow me to choose for me anymore. I got to put it to God and say, God, this is what I want. So I literally bring in my list and I say, Lord, this is what I want. So far, it's not here. That's because he's preparing it. And things like that may be frivolous to some people. But I'm a believer that whatever we ask God for, that means that when they do come and then situations start to go a little bit to the left, I can say, Lord, you brought this. You brought this. I asked you for this. My choice hasn't been proven to be so wonderful so far. So, Lord, I am in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. No, sorry, the wrong scripture. That's the one I wanted. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. So this communion, what it's talking about is that intimate relationship. It's that closeness. It is that, 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 that daily walk with somebody, with, in this case with the Holy Spirit, that I could say things to him and that he would know me and I would know him. That is the fellowship that God wants for us. That is the same blessing that the priest had. What he's saying here is not just words, but the manifestation of God be with you in that sweet fellowship, in the communion. That when you go out and you come, you, you're out with him all day, you're having that consciousness about who my God is. You're thinking about him. You're walking with him. He is all over you. It's not just talking about, you know, uh, uh, um, just bringing information. But it's also just bringing that, 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 that depth, that insight to things that you weren't able to see before. That because there was so much dullness, there was so much darkness that prevented you from seeing who God is. But God that's in your face now, he's going to cause you to see things that you couldn't see before. He's going to cause you to read a text, Pastor. And what you couldn't see now is coming differently. It's giving you fresh sermon. A rhema word, a different word, an enlightened word. A word that you could have read many, many times and you're thinking, oh, I never saw this before. That's the blessing. That's the blessing of having God in your life. That is the blessing of having God in your face. It's knowing that he's shining through you. He's making a difference through you. That your presence made the difference. When you walk into any circumstances, any place, any home, that your presence there is going to move situation. Because the fruit that we have sown, it is bearing. It is now time for us to harvest. So we can dance and sing because we know that all the efforts that we have made, here it is. It's come to my house. It is, a, it is a reality for me. I'm not just talking about a blessing, but I'm experiencing a blessing. I am showing forth the blessings of God. Is that not cause to celebrate? Is that not cause to celebrate? People of God, let us live in anticipation. It is for us. Regardless of how long it tarries. Regardless of how long you're waiting. Don't let the field and don't let the fact that things are still green. In the sense of there is no fruit on the vine. I don't see a difference. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm supposed to celebrate. You're not praising God because it's, it's, it's here. You're praising God because it's coming. That is faith. It's the evidence of things hoped for. I know I have a, a hope of everything that I have asked God for. And I'm not going to wait until it happens before I say thank you, Jesus. I'm going to thank him anyhow because I know that it is so. Will you stand with me this morning? When I was getting this, this, bless the people of God this morning. 
And it's almost like what, you know, Brother Jeff was saying. I'm just like, Lord, why me? Like, why are you choosing? Why can't apostle and why can't? And it's because I know what God has done in my life. And I've said to you before, I'm not the poster child for any whatever. But I know that I have experienced things in life that there are times that I didn't know that I could make it. And in all honesty, if I could be really real with you, I don't even know if sometimes I wanted to make it. When you're hurt so bad that you're almost thinking it's better to die. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Really in that sometimes you feel things that you sometimes are afraid to confess before church people. Because you see the thing is with church people, we have a public face and it's the face that we are all good, nothing's wrong with me. How are you? Wonderful. Hi. How, oh, how, are, how is the children? Blessed. How is life? Couldn't be better. And then you come to July and you ask, how are you? Girl, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. But God is not going to bless your churchy face. God isn't going to bless your churchy attitude and your, your churchy image and your, your churchy. He will never bless the pretense you. He wants the real you. That is an abject lesson from Genesis when he called unto Adam and said, Where are you? Do you think the God of heaven needed information? What he was asking is, Why are you covering up yourself with all this stuff? If you sin, come boldly before the throne of grace where you can find help to deal with whatever you're dealing with. Not be what you want to hear but it is my truth because I truly believe that if I am honest before God he will then fix me up whatever is so wrong with me he will fix me up but if I continue to pretend with you you will always think that there's nothing wrong with her she's fine she's okay life is wonderful for her not always so if you are here today and you're looking at this, this topic and you're seeing a year of fruitfulness and you're thinking and you know in yourself because God can deal with honesty. Think about where you are and where you want to be and admit it and say, God, I'm not seeing the things that I want to see. I purpose for these things to happen and I want for them to be happening I want to be able to stand and give a testimony of what you have done for the last 12 months for me and I don't see it happening I want for you to come because I believe that God will meet you at the point of your need don't worry about what it look like don't worry about what you may what other, may, other people may say about you it doesn't matter it does not matter God wants to, God be merciful unto us. And I love that it didn't just say, God be merciful unto me. He said, God be merciful unto us. And so that includes all of us. The, whole, the, 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 the ones that are good and the ones that are not so good. The ones that are holy and the ones that are somewhat unholy. The ones that are Christian or quasi-Christian, Buddhist, Methodist, all of them wrapped together trying to find my way. God, be merciful unto all of us. Good needs him. The not so good needs him. It is the mercies of God that causes us to be here. So let's not forget what this is about. It is because God is merciful. It is because God is gracious. It is because God is kind. Is there anyone who needs prayer today?
and he's not here to judge us. Minister to the people at the altar today. This is a community blessing. This is a community altar call. This is not about anybody. Come and meet you where you are. pastors to come.